Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy Dixon from Totem Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this 3D Chrome logo effect in Photoshop. It is a tutorial and I use this technique a lot when I design merch. I'm really excited to begin, so let's go. Right guys, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. We're going to go to this print tab here and then select A4. Make sure that the orientation is horizontal and not vertical. And then I'm um, just going to keep the rest of the settings as this and then click create. Now click on the lock button of the background layer to unlock it because in a minute we'll be adding some effects to it. I'm just going to convert the background layer to black since that's what we'll be working on today. Um, now we can start adding the text. Um, the font I'm using today is called Killigrew. I have provided the download link below so you can check it out if you want. But it doesn't really matter what kind of font you use. You can even use your own logo. The effect will still work the same. You can skip this part guys this is just my own preference because i like to do the font this way um so that it looks more dramatic but anyway now after you've converted the type layer to smart object right click on it and then go to blending options and then check on the bevel and emboss layer let me just reset it to default one sec now the style is set in inner bevel and then the technique is smooth. As for the depth, we're going to bring it all the way up to 1000 and then we're going to keep the directions up. As for the size, let's set it to 35 and then 5 for soften. For now, we'll leave the angle and altitude as is because we'll come back to it later to change it. Now for the gloss and contour, I mostly use either of these two presets, but of course you can experiment with the others, depend on your liking. Uh, I'm going to bring the opacity of the highlight to 100 and then the shadow to maybe about 60 and that's it for this effect. The next step is adding an inner shadow layer. Not much changes here, we're just going to bring the distance of the shadow to zero and then um, the size to about 17. After that, just click OK. You can see now the 3D Chrome effect is coming together already, but let me show you what I can do to improve that. First, group the layer and then add a curves adjustment layer and then link it from above so that the effects only apply to it. Moving on, I'm gonna create two new points inside of the curves adjustment layer. And then the first one, I'm gonna bring it all the way up. And then the second one, I'm gonna bring it all the way down like this. You can see that the 3D effect looks more refined now, but we're not gonna stop here. Let's add two more points to the curves exactly like what we did just now. Um, you can see that the lines are way sharper now. You can stop here if you want, but let me do it one more time just to see how it looks. Um, it is too much, but we'll circle around to it later. So guys, the next step is adding some colors by using the gradient map layer. Make sure it is linked to the group layer once again. I've already pre-selected the colors, so I'll just put the hex codes on screen. You can just copy and paste them. Um, basically keep the two colors on each end in this really really dark gray and then white in the middle and in between those three points uh, are these teal blue color and this really highlighted blue and then you should have something like this for the placement though there is no specific numbers you can just adjust them by dragging it left and right but i'm pretty happy with this one so i'm gonna leave it like that now I'm going to go back to the curves layer and then get rid of the last two points. If you didn't do this part, then you can just skip to the um, bevel and boss layer and then change the gloss contour just to see if any of the other presets work better. You can see that it changes a lot depending on which one you choose. Uh, moving on, I'm going to start adjusting the angle and altitude. You can see that the results also varies depending on the placement. but I like it best when I put the angle to 75 and then altitude 55. Now I'm pretty happy with the result. Let's move on to the next step. 
okay so now we're gonna add some sparks to the design i'm gonna create one from scratch and then just copy and paste it for the rest so to create a spark we'll be using the polygon tool in this case mine is set at the end of the toolbar so look it up and then select it make sure that the fill is turned on and then the color is white i'm gonna leave the stroke in zero because we don't want any outline on the spark then go to the section here to put in four because we only need four points on the spark then click on this gear icon here copy everything you see here for the settings the most important part is the star ratio make sure that it's set in five percent after that we can start creating the spark by dragging down like this hold on to shift while you drag it down so that it doesn't get out of proportion um okay so now we're gonna go to filter blur and then gaussian blur select convert to smart object always convert to smart object and then set the radius to five we're almost done now so let's add a soft brush to the spark to really sell it so create a new layer and then select the brush tool make sure that you're using the soft round brush let's see if the size is big enough uh, i think i'm gonna up the size one time and then just left click now select both of the star layer and the brush layer and then center them together like this now let's merge them together and then you can start putting them on the design um, i suggest you put it on the bright spots of the design so that it looks like it's so bright that it's shining So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's clean it up a little bit. Select all the spark layers and then hit command G to group them together. Now the next step is optional, but I like to give it that touch of ambiance by adding some glow to it. So select all the layers except the background and then hit option command E to merge them. After that, go to a filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Set the radius to 20 and then hit OK. After that, you can go to the blending mode of that layer and then select lighten. It sometimes works with other modes too, like screen. You can try it out first if you want, but in this case, I'm just going to go with this. Uh, after that, just bring the opacity to 70% and that's it. Now we're almost done. Let's add a color gradient to the background. So right click on the background layer and then select gradient overlay. Select the gradient that we made earlier, but only use two colors, specifically this shade of blue and then this black. After that, you should have something like this. The last step is adding a noise layer to wrap everything up. So create a new layer, make sure that it's above the rest of the layers and then click shift delete. A fill window should pop up something like this and then select 50% gray for the contents and then select okay. After that, go to filter noise and then add noise, put 20% for the amount, select uniform for the distribution and then check the monochromatic box and then just select OK. After that, just change the blending mode to soft light and then bring the opacity to 80% and we're done. Okay guys, that is it for today. I will provide the PSD file that I'm working on today for free. You can download it, link below. Hope that wasn't too hard of a tutorial. I'm not that good at teaching people if you haven't noticed, but I do want to improve that. So let me know what you guys think below. As usual, make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more videos and free stuff. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.